Hey guys, it's Tracy. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing my May wrap up and June TBR. Now before I do this, I want to address a couple of things. What I do want to say right now is that, again, I am acknowledging that this is happening in the real world, that I am not sweeping it under the rug. I don't particularly have a very big platform, I would say, or a wider audience, but all but there is still so much that we need to do and if I can do my part and speak up about it and address it then, then that's something that I want to do as well. Again, I'll leave links to a lot of resources and places that you can help out. Some of those links will definitely be just US related but I will also include links for our fellow Aussies who want to show support. I don't have the same experiences or an understanding of what know black people are feeling what they've gone through anything like that so i never want to put words in people's mouths or assume things i just want to say that i will be echoing a lot of what i've read one thing that i do want to bring attention to or i guess highlight that i have seen so far so i've I've been following a lot of this through Twitter and I know that online, you know, your f the facts and the things that you see aren't always entirely accurate, but I am trying to weed out the accounts or the information that I've seen that I know isn't portraying this in a great light or is trying to divert attention to something else. But I did see a 10 steps to non-optical allyship uh, a thread so the one thing that really stood out to me was understanding what an optical allyship is which is essentially you know making a statement that's a service level statement to show to show people that you care but it doesn't really attack anything below what the surface is and doesn't really create a change and I don't de and I definitely don't want to be part of that I definitely want to be part of the movement that changes things or you know pushes for change tries to help in some form or manner another thing is like being prepared to do the work so understanding that coming to terms with your own privilege will not be a pretty or fun experience it is necessary to feel feelings of guilt shame and anger throughout the process which is entirely something that I have been feeling reading up on anti-racist anti works as well so I have a background in criminology which means I have done quite a bit of study in terms of social economic issues out there I would love to read more but I know that the onus is on me to search for these things so I'm definitely going to be actively trying to read up on these works as well educating yourself is so important like I've mentioned before doing research as well and this is definitely the time to continue to do that I'll leave a link to this thread down below because I think it points out a couple of really good points to uh, read about when talking about allyship so yeah I definitely didn't want to start this video just pretending like nothing's happening because it is it's real and we are currently living through a really horrifying time. So for the month of May, I actually read a total of five books, which is impressive to me because of the fact that I haven't read as much over the last few years. I would read maybe one book a month, two if I was lucky. So the fact that I read five this month, really makes me feel happy and proud about my efforts. We'll start off with the one that I finished just last night and this one is 10,000 Skies Above You by Cordia Gray. The second book in the Firebird series. I know that this series is a very popular, it's a YA fantasy and it's been out for ages now. I flew through this much like the first book that I read and I absolutely loved it. Definitely didn't love it as much as the first book but I think that's how our series goes. I do have the third book already and I'm excited to start that one. If you didn't know, this series is all about the concept of parallel universes and traveling between dimensions. The main character, Marguerite, in the first book starts to 
travel through dimensions to seek justice for her father's death. That's not a spoiler, it happens immediately. You can read it on the blurb. And then the second book follows the same concept and Marguerite is still this central focus as well as our heroine. I don't know why it took me so long to read this. I love it. I love the writing style and everything about it. Next up is Lethal White by Robert Galbraith. This is JK Rowling's my bookmark in there still. This is JK Rowling's alias name. So if you were watching my reading vlog, I finished it in the reading vlog over the weekend. It's the fourth book in the Comrade Strike series, which is a adult crime mystery novel. I didn't love this as much as the first three. It was a lot slower. This is a 750 page book and it only picked up, that scared me, it only picked up in the last 250 pages and saying that I don't think I wasted my time reading it because by the end of it the mystery that was revealed was a really big aha and satisfying moment to me. You can read my full entire review, I'll leave a link to it down below. And then I have Kate Morton's The Clockmaker's Daughter. This here is an adult mystery slash contemporary novel pretty much. I love Kate Morton and everything that she writes. Within this story, much like her other novels, there's a mystery that happens way back in time and then modern day you have your main character who stumbles upon it somehow and slowly the mystery unravels through flashbacks as well as changes in perspectives of the different characters who are involved. At the end of the day Kate Morton proved why she's still one of my favourite authors. Again I've written a review for this so you can leave it or you can read it down below. We have The Thing About Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin. This one here is a middle grade novel. It speaks about really big topics. So the main character Susie doesn't speak anymore and this comes after her best friend's death. So Franny ends up drowning in, at sea and for Susie it's not something that she can't comprehend because to her Franny's always been a great swimmer. She's trying to understand why it's happened and she's so fixated on it that she starts to blame jellyfish. Um, I have mixed feelings about this because I like that Ali Benjamin has tackled something that a lot of people don't want to speak about grief is a very big thing that everyone has to deal with but we don't tend to speak about it and I'm a really big advocate of grief normalization. I have done a full video about grief and whatnot which I actually think I'll tackle more when it comes to reading experiences but when it comes to the actual book and reading it itself I felt very detached from the character Susie. I also didn't feel like I was reading from her age in particular. I I don't know. I would say that this flits around a three to three and a half stars. I haven't done a review for it just yet because I'm still thinking about it. Reading experiences wise it was okay. And then lastly which is the first book I read for the month I'm pretty sure is A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray so that's the first book to the this one that I mentioned. I probably should have started with this one first. But yeah, I flew through both of these. So those are all the books that I read during May. I also just wanted to quickly highlight my June TBR. Not much because, like I said, reading five books is impressive enough to me. So we'll see if I get through these. This particular book I've spoken about multiple times already. It's Tales of a Tall Forest from a Tall Forest by Sean McAuliffe. Fairy tale like novel really. It's a picture book pretty much and I think I will be able to finish this overnight. I would love to have that feeling of me just being in bed reading a fairy tale like I did when I was young so that's why I want to read this one. I think something that I do want to read quite quickly is the birds of or the ballads of songbirds and snakes by Suzanne Collins, the prequel to the Hunger Games where it follows Snow before he's president. I think around the 10th anniversary of the Hunger Games. He's a mentor to a tribute from the 12th district and she's a female and, and he needs his tribute to win the Hunger Games to prove his worth. I've heard many mixed reviews. I've seen a lot of booktubers already do reviews on them, speak about it, what not. We'll see how I feel about it. And then we have A Million Worlds with You by Claudia Gray which is the third book to the Firebird series so like I said I love the first two so I'm excited to read the third one and I'm also currently rereading Harry Potter so I've actually started 
already. This is the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Now, now just to say something really quickly, I do know that J.K. Rowling is very, very problematic person. She hasn't really spoken up about what's happening at the moment in the US, which says a lot. It's really hard when you're attached to something like this, like Harry Potter being such a really big part of everyone's childhood, but then coming from someone that you don't particularly support. I know that I've read her other book as well by Robert Galbraith, which is her alias name, but I think from now on, going forward, I'm definitely going to be looking into or researching more about you know authors products businesses that i like that i might want to buy from that may not have the same morals and values that are like mine that's just me trying to educate myself um but that's the books that i want to read for june as well i feel like this is a very lengthy video already i would love to know what you guys read during may as well as what you are planning to read in june so leave a comment down below i really hope that everyone is taking care and being safe out there <sighs> my heart just goes out to a lot of people i shall see you guys next time bye